Greetings! Today I've got something given to me by a friend and he got this on eBay. It's a, a what they called in dash dash cam dash camera and this is a more or less five six pound item from eBay and he got this a while back and it lasted just about six days in the car and it's dead. It doesn't power on. He gave it to me and asked me if I could have a look at it. So let's take this apart see how rubbish it is inside uh, clearly it didn't last very long um, and yeah see if we can get it fixed here it is in all its glory um, the device itself with the flip down screen and we've got a charger we'll test that as well make sure that is working it comes with a mount that's yeah it's got a suction cup which seems okay and the mount itself with a ball joint and yeah apart from being plastic there's nothing actually wrong with that this is actually quite okay let's have a look at this so first of all I don't know what words to use to describe how this feels this is like 10 times recycled lowest grade plastic that this was made out of it's absolutely horrible so yeah he's got a lens he's got some electronics inside and a few leds which presumably don't do much it's got a memory card slot huh look at look at the wobble in this it's just yeah and what's here usb presumably that's uh, for charging and as well and it uses BL5C i.e. Nokia battery which of course it's not Nokia it's fake 1050 milliamp hours I highly doubt that this has got the capacity it claims on the sticker shaped pieces of wire to serve as battery contacts in the battery compartment I've got two screws here one here and one under the sticker if I plug in the USB to it it's not drawing any current, any significant current whatsoever, about 50 milliamps and that's about it and doesn't respond to anything. So I got the four screws out now and let's see what will happen. Okay, it is coming off-ish. Yes, it did come off. A speaker mounted here on a piece of sticky foam someone's done a terrible job soldering the sensor over to the board with the flat, flat flex ribbon I'll show you close up in a moment two more screws holding the board in place so let's get that out and let's see if we can now remove the whole thing from from the board from the case rather and yes it does come out and we have the flat flex that connects to the LCD so maybe let's disconnect this flat flex and here is the main board okay there's a microphone oh I know it's the problem already okay let's get closer here we have the board there is not much on here happening there's a couple of discrete components whatever those are that looks like a transistor maybe not sure what that five pin package is um, three infrared LEDs on one side this is the flat flex connector we've got a chip that's got a print on it CH2S1R-038 and no manufacturer marking nothing whatsoever so yeah good luck finding data sheets on that um, a little crystal microphone there was probably another PCB over here that was used for something else and they were separating them by just having those tabs but if you look over here you can see what the problem is so there was a five pin package over here well it still is we can wow we can even read it said for a to d on top of it but it's completely toasted it's been it exploded uh, overheated and done something else uh, this was probably a voltage regulator six days in use and done on the other side we've got uh, the switches that were on the back one is record i think and one is 
uh, power, a couple of LEDs, the full size SD card slot, another chip which appears to have no markings whatsoever, a really tiny speaker and look at this, they, they couldn't even get the angle right, they couldn't do it straight, it, the, the flat flex that goes to the sensor in here is yeah soldered horribly and the USB port that's used for charging and probably probably for communication this probably will enumerate as a mass storage device when connected to a computer after a short investigation it appears to be a knockoff of a STM LD3985M33R 3.3 volt LDO so low dropout regulator okay let's try to uh, get this cleaned up remove this and then we'll and then I'll see if there is something that can be done easily with this let's maybe try to reflood the pads with fresh solder okay it's giving up easily just because it's disintegrated itself the board is completely charred underneath this of course at this point is a beyond economical repair. I think we've lost a pad over there as well. But if this thing costs six pounds and what's the point of fixing it? It's just not economical. But let's just do it for curiosity. Um, let's figure out, I think this was the input and this was the output and the ground should be one of those here so let's see if we can buzz those out okay check this out so I've noticed something so according to the data sheet if this knockoff had the same um, the same pinout in this little SOT 235 packages then this this would be the input and then this would be the output and on the output side there is a cap and I just happened to see I just wanted to check whether there will be a connection from the output to the cup and yes there is I think yeah that's fine but it's to the both sides and the cap on the output side and in fact every cup on the output side is a direct short so it's not that the caps itself themselves are bad somewhere on the 3.3 volt uh, rail there is a direct short and that's why this just blown out of its ass and uh, the short could be in this chip it could be in, in the sensor it could be anywhere but look any any cap over here that I check right across it there is a short if we try to apply power to this this will be yeah it will basically just just be a short circuit okay I think this is quite conclusive this is busted and unrepairable and yeah there is a somewhere short uh, on here and visually there isn't anything anything wrong so as far as I'm concerned the short can be might as well be across the main chip what caused the short um, I'm thinking let's have a look at the charger maybe the charger uh, went in the first place and then put 12 volts across this and that's what caused this to die so let's open that up and here is the charger it's a mini USB type and it's got really long cable over here which is nice but it's a 5 volt 1 amp charger I'm thinking how many of those 5 volts is going to be delivered across this length of cable if this unit is gonna draw 1 amp there's no screws in the in the charger itself uh, it's just held by clips and the, and the pin at the end so yeah it's a usual arrangement of just a spring clip and we've got a regulator chip 8 pin package LC56 there you can probably just about uh, make out so LC56 and it's a, there's a diode inductor two capacitors and an LED for status and that's all there is to it amazing soldering here uh, this solder bowl I'm not sure what's 
that about let's put some 12 volts across this and see what's on the output so I'm putting 13 volts on the input um, over here which should be just fine uh, as far as car cigarette lighters uh, go and let's see if I can measure anything on the output because the LED is not coming on nope that is dead so this uh, this charger is dead uh, and the unit is dead so the camera failed first and short circuit um, basically this probably has got, hasn't got very good over current protection and this died subconsequently of, uh, of the camera shorting out you were thinking of buying this type of camera uh, for recording your accidents and putting them on YouTube afterwards yeah invest for something better accidents don't happen that often uh, so you may want to be sure it gets recorded this is a very inexpensive and cheap item and it's very low quality thank you very much for watching subscribe for more random electronics related stuff for the time being take care